we'll get a little bit into the nitty gritty here and diving into uh, to steering traces here. So I have a couple different, uh, two different laps here with the, the steering angle and lateral G down below. And I wanted to use these to kind of illustrate some of the, the typical things we like to look for and common issues. So as I'm sure um, everyone can notice, the big, big thing to notice here with the white trace is this big oversteer moment. Um, so we can obviously see that when the trace starts to increase and has a radical change in direction at some point indicates, you know, the driver was turning in one one direction and all of a sudden had to correct, turn back to uh, the normal position. Once we get to our other driver inputs, our throttle and brake, unpack a little bit more of why that may happen. But what I want to bring attention to is the uh, the entry point here. So both of these traces really start to steer at around the same time, kind of smooth out this white trace a little bit. You know, they maybe start at a, at a little bit less of a rate compared to this red ones. If we're just purely thinking about turn and placement, this white graph, for reference, this is a 180 degree corner, I think turn 11 at Sonoma. So if I were to just draw a little track on the side here, um, you can see this white trace taking a little bit slower turn and approach. So we can infer that by seeing, all right, maybe turning at the same point, but a much slower rate. So it's giving the car more time to set. You're not inducing as much understeer, not also chasing it down to the apex initially like you would. Um, if you're turning in a bit too aggressively here too. So when Ken talked about uh, the drills last week, this is the typical trace that we like to see. Not, not so much a linear increase up to your maximum steering point, but should be a nice slow buildup, slow and smooth, top of the bell at our, our peak apex or peak turning point. And then we gradually bring it back down, ease it out on the exit. In this case, it's more of a linear trace because we're taking a, a later apex and then letting the car gradually unwind as we get back to exit rolling on the throttle. Yeah, in a perfect world, the idea is you want to add steering wheel angle in a linear fashion to the slow point and take away from the slow point. Mm -hmm. In a perfect world, as you can see, there's a, a thousand different little corrections, but that's the idea. Absolutely. It should just be smooth inputs throughout. And then when we talk about weight transfer, all of our cars here have springs. And as our cars have higher center of gravities, as they have softer springs, more roll, all these inputs need to happen a little bit slower. Otherwise, you're gonna you're not giving the car enough time to sell. You're not giving the, the tires enough time to really work under the platform that you're providing. As your cars get stiffer and typically faster, a lot of these inputs will happen a bit quicker as well. You know, you talk about Formula One cars, you see how quickly they're able to react on the wheel because their suspension is super stiff. It's super responsive. But your uh, Mustang or Corvette or you know any street car or a lot of GT cars, they take more time than that to settle. So that's why we need to slow our inputs down. When I came out of racing go karts and hopped in a cars for the first time. I mean, the biggest thing uh, all kids out of karting really start out with is just trying to turn the wheel super, super fast and aggressively because your cart doesn't have any suspension. All the compliance is built into the chassis itself. So that's something I've seen a ton of, you know, trying to shock the car, shock the wheel by turning in too quickly. And just something you really need to keep in mind is uh, slowing your hands down. We talk about, you know, the same turning in earlier, but slower. Uh, seeing that on the, on the trace here, we can look at, you know, our steering rate itself you know how quickly are we increasing the wheel are we starting out nice and slow to let the car settle those are the type of things that we like to look for here we're also going to touch on uh, the lateral g trace now 90 percent of the time this is a great way to infer steering angle if you um you know again if you just have an aim solo in your car or something really simple you can see the uh lateral acceleration see the grip change on the vehicle rather than your actual steering on the car you can see these two traces you know pretty much start around the same point as the uh, actual steering trace does. A little bit more of a gap here to begin with, but the key difference is that our lateral G trace isn't gonna show how our car is handling or what specifically we're doing on the wheel. You could have one driver go through a corner, sawing at the wheel, trying to get a ton of grip on the front end or you know, sliding through a corner, tons of counter steer correction, but if your car is you know, still, still has load in it, you're still accelerating in that same direction, you're not going to see these big moments, these big corrections in the lateral G data. So that's just something to be aware of. Again, those little limitations with uh, only using the accelerations our, of our car to look at it. That's something that if you had you know, onboard video, if you're able to see what the driver's doing with your hands in the car, that's a great way to corroborate those two data points um, in reference uh, when you're analyzing yourself out on track.